So Valdez is the terminus of the Trans-Alaska Pipeline. The only road in and out of Valdez is the Richardson Highway, and it goes through Keystone Canyon and Thompson Pass. And in that region, they get annually, on the average, 400 inches of snow every year. So if the road's closed for very long, it starts to really cause some significant issues. The food coming in and out, of course, you got the general public, you know, they want to be able to go to Anchorage, they want to be able to go on their vacations, they have flights to catch, they have, you know, their, their lives to live. There's only one thing that happens here, and that's keep this road open. It feels good to make roads safe, to be doing something for the community, and it's mostly just about, like, being a bigger part of something. It really is a one-of-a-kind place. It's pretty remarkable, and so, just being able to work here is cool. You know, Alaska's a big state. It's 40% uh, the size of the United States. And there are some places that we've had to fly trucks in. So the tanks had to be built, put on the truck, and you put them on skids and load them onto a C-130. Fly them out there, unload them, put them back together. I jokingly tell the state they turn these things into Swiss Army knives because once you see one of them going down the road, you'll understand what I mean by that because it's you take a Swiss Army knife and you fold out all the tools you know, that you can use at one time and that's kind of what these trucks look like. The Mac has just proven itself to be, you know, one tough truck. My name is Mark Hansen. I work for Department of Transportation on Thompson Pass near Valdez. I've been doing it for 22 years now and I've been a resident of Valdez for almost 40 years. My name is Moana Bradshaw. Uh, I work for the State of Alaska Department of Transportation in Thompson Pass. I've been up here for five years, plowing snow, keeping the road safe. My name's Tavis Chaffin. I work for DOT up on Thompson Pass. I've been working here for six years. It's like blood, I'm a fossil, and I'm at the very end of my career. And this whole thing has been mind-blowing. If we stopped, we would lose our roads. We have to continuously plow. Well, we can usually see the storms coming, but sometimes we can't. We usually show up, check the weather, do a road check, make a plan, and pray for snow, mostly, because that's what we're here for. <laughs> uh, if we're in the middle of a storm, it's on the road with the trucks, keeping the roads clear. There's usually two of us on shift at night, and we go out in the trucks, we make a plan before we leave. One of us usually goes one direction, one of us goes the other. We have 60 miles of hot lane to take care of, and we usually overlap in the center in the gap because that is where all the action happens. The wind never stops blowing there during a storm. So our average is two inches an hour. But when we're getting six to eight inches an hour, and it takes you an hour and a half to do your route, well, you can do the math and there's six to eight inches, maybe even 10 on the road by the time you get back to where you started. And they don't wait for the weather to stop. So even if it's a whiteout condition, they've got these trucks and graders and whatever pieces of equipment they need to keep these roads clear going. I mean, they have a heads up display so they know where the edge is. Um, so they don't obviously go off the road. And, uh, and now it's almost like a video game or something. You can see my vehicle there. So now if I start going over to the left here, and I get over the center line, boom, it turns red. Now you can see my vehicle is clearly over the center line. I don't want to do that. I want to be right where I want to plow the road is right here, just like this. So now if I'm in a whiteout right now, I know where I'm at on the road. Thompson Pass is the snow capital of Alaska. We get more snow up here than anywhere else in the state. Last December, we had, I believe it was 80 inches of snow or something in one storm. We have real high wind events up here. We'll get winds. We've had winds recorded 125 miles an hour up here. Well, in 2014, we had the dam avalanche, which is pretty well. The reason it's called dam avalanche is it actually dammed up the Low River. The dam avalanche was an interesting event. Well, dam avalanche, and it shows that that big avalanche down in Valdez that covered the road, blocked the river. 2,200 feet of road and some of it buried as much as 140 feet deep. Oh, yeah. This is gonna take them more than a few days. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. It's 
So on Saturday, we were able to fly in there, fly the gun crew in, because we needed to do avalanche control work. Plus, we had a helicopter come from Anchorage so that we could actually do aerial bombing, too. They dropped us off just on the other side of the, just on the north side of the lake, basically, across this bridge that was halfway underwater. And then when the helicopter took off and left, it's just all this silence except for all the avalanches that were still coming down around. A bunch of small stuff was still coming down. And you just had this raw earth smell from all the, because these avalanches were down, scouring down to ground. And uh, it was just a really, really, uh, um, just a, a feeling you never forget. It was pretty much amazing, other than that I couldn't see anything around me. The problem was that there wasn't an end in sight. And so my advice is, hey, let's just close this thing down and wait till Mother Nature stabilizes it. But we can't do that. I mean, just the oil alone that gets moved up and over the hill, let alone all the other stuff that goes for military and food. And during the dam lunch, it was funny to see, you know, our little town went berserk, you know, they were like scared of running out of milk. Whole mountain range came down and just completely plugged up the little river and the road. The road, at some estimates, was about 80 feet under snow in some, in some places. Once we were able to start clearing the road, it took us five days and we had the road open. Once the water went away, then we used the state resources and we used the private contractors here in town to help us with getting that, getting that massive avalanche out of the way. So that was probably the biggest challenge that I've had in the 22 years up here was that, was that event. It was, uh, yeah, it was a pretty awesome sight. Luckily nobody was, you know, caught up that got hurt in the avalanche, so. After a big storm and, you know, we get a big snowfall, there's a lot of maintenance type stuff that we do to the road. We'll pull the banks down to prepare for the next snowfall. Even though it's not snowing, there's still a lot of plowing to do and then a lot of other maintenance just to prepare for the next storm. My favorite part of this job is when you've been out on the road for 12 hours plowing snow. Every time you turn around, there's six inches in the road. And when it's time to get off shift, you go to pull back in the driveway and there's three feet there and you can't get back in. And then you know the snow machine's gonna be really good tomorrow. <laughs> There's times when I'm, I'm running the equipment out here and you're looking around and you're just going, this is just awesome. It's really exciting, it's nerve wracking, it's, it's a lot of fun for the people that find it fun. I feel like those people have kind of slowly found their way up to, to Thompson Pass. 